In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. All right, and our Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of John. And this is one of my favorite passages in the Gospel of John, and that's saying something because the Gospel of John is my favorite book of the Bible. This is John 3, 26 through 30. And they came to John, by the way, this is John the Baptist, not John the Apostle. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing, and all are coming to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given him from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who is the bride, he who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom stands and hears him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made full. He must increase, but I must decrease. You know, there are so many different places you could go to with that verse. There is such a wealth of theological wisdom contained within them. But I want us to start out at the very beginning of that, where the disciples of John are seeing Jesus really start to increase, his movement is starting to take off. People are actually kind of abandoning them and going to follow Christ. And they are very concerned about this. They're saying, this guy, the one who you baptize, so in their mind, the religious superior, the one doing the baptizing, is the one that he, this guy who you baptized is sort of taking off and becoming more popular than you, and they see this as a real problem, that these people are going to Christ instead of John. And John is just the epitome of humility here. He answers in such a commanding but yet simple way that he must increase and I must decrease. And I love this analogy that he uses here where he talks about the bride and the bridegroom. It's something that we all understand, that when a wedding is going on, somebody that's a real friend isn't concerned by the fact that they're not the one getting married or maybe that person doesn't have a wife or for whatever reason. They understand that the day is not about them. And they're perfectly fine to play whatever role that they do. If you're the best man, you're happy to be the best man. Not because you're happy for yourself or that you get to stand up there or whatever. Frankly, it's, it's much more relaxing just attending a wedding than actually being the best man or being a part of it. And, and I know that better than most. But you don't feel resentful because the bridegroom, or the, he, the, he has the bride, you're thrilled that they're getting married. And that's the same kind of sentiment that John the Baptist says here. John understands he's just a herald. He's just the guy that came to prepare the world for the coming of the Christ. And I mean, oh my gosh, what an honor to be that person that comes to the world and says, the Messiah is coming. He is on his way. Get ready. I mean, I can't imagine what kind of level of honor that is. And with that level of honor, pride could have easily seeped in to John. It could have easily planted a bug in his ear and thought, man, you're a really big deal. Look at you. And I think that's what makes John's humility so impressive. As human beings, we have a hard time dealing with praise and people admiring us and talking well of us. It's hard for someone to have that in their life and to be able to lose it and give it up. That's why you have child stars that their life goes off the rails after they're not quite as popular as they used to be. Heck, even famous people that weren't child stars, if they start kind of going downhill in their career or they're not 
uh, the name that everybody wants to hear like there once was, they usually have problems, problems with drugs, problems with their their mates or, or illicitly going around and sleeping with people. They, their life goes off the rails. They can't handle it when they're not as famous as they once were. And this is John going through this and people talking about him being a prophet and what a great spiritual leader he was. And he was. But this is him seeing his movement moving towards Christ and saying, look, guys, I did my job. This is what I was supposed to do. When at a wedding, the best man kind of steps out of the way to the side to make room for the bride and groom, he doesn't begrudge that. He understands that that's his job. That's what he's there for. His presence is specifically to be an assistant to the person that's actually getting married, the two people that the day is about. And that's exactly what John understood. It wasn't about him. And he got that. With all the temptation, with all the opportunity that John would have had to puff himself up and say, look at me and, and how you know spiritually sound I am and, and what a great spiritual leader I am, he does the exact opposite. And that's the call that every single disciple of Christ really has, isn't it? That when we give our life to Christ, the first thought in our mind should be, He must increase, I must decrease. His will, His thoughts, His laws, that's what needs to increase in me. And my selfish desires, what I want, needs to decrease. John was so focused on doing the task that God had given him. He was so laser-focused on it that he understood that his own fame, his own glory, that's just a side note. It doesn't matter. As long as he got to do what God wanted him to do, he was fine with it. And Jesus, who was his cousin, he understood that that's what the world really needed. As great as John was, and he was, he couldn't save mankind. He wasn't perfect. He didn't have a sinless drop of blood in his body to be able to give as an atonement and save the world. Couldn't do it. He was just glad to be there. He was just glad to tell people the good news that Jesus is coming and salvation is here. And that's what every single one of his disciples should do every single day. And we should go through our day thinking, he must increase. I must decrease. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.